What is up Web3 people? Welcome back to the Morales channel. Today we're looking at how you can exchange any native cryptocurrency on any EVM network, for example, Polygon, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, to ERC20 tokens using the Morales SDK and the One Inch API. If this sounds cool to you, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to do this. Let me just first remove my face from the screen over here so we have a bit more real estate for this demonstration. All right, so here we're logged into this swapping application with this account 0x9 on the Polygon network using the EVM API. For Morales, we get their native Matic balance, which is 3.864. Then we can use the input field over here to select how much Matic we would like to exchange. We'll go for one Matic because we have 3.864. And then we get a list of ERC20 tokens we can exchange to. I've provided two options, Wrapped Ethereum and USDC, but you can also provide any other ERC20 tokens here as well. Then we get the conversion, which seems to be 0.833. Let's check on CoinMarketCap. Seems like that's the correct exchange rate. Going back to our app, let's swap these tokens. We, we're prompted to check our wallet. Our wallet wants to make a swap and send one Matic to the one inch aggregator. Let's do that, confirm. And then we get our transaction hash. Let's copy this. And this should be processing on the Polygon network over here. Let's go to Polygon scan, paste our transaction hash. And the transaction has been included into block number 32, et cetera, et cetera. We wait for a while. Let's check MetaMask. The swap has just gone through. So now if we refresh the page, you see a success. We've received 0.83 USDC coins for this wallet. Let's go back to the app, check our wallet assets. Our Matic balance has gone down and our USDC balance has gone up. How cool is that? Now, if we refresh the page, we get our new Matic balance and we can make a new exchange. If this sounds good to you, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, getting started with this project, let's open up Visual Studio Code. And as a backbone for the project, we'll use the multiple wallet authentication project we built in a previous video. There'll be a link on the screen if you want to go check that video out right now. And there'll be a link in the description for this starter repository. Just when you get it, remember to install all the dependencies and PMI. After the dependencies have installed, also make sure that you have a .dnv.local file and within it, you have a Morales API key set. There'll be a link in the description to tell you how you can obtain a Morales API key. Use your own. This is just for demonstration purposes. And then you can generate a next auth secret that is also covered in the previous tutorial if you want to check that out. But now as this is set up, we can close the .env.local and open up our development server npm run dev. The app is compiled. Let's open up Google Chrome. Beautiful. Here we have localhost 3000 slash sign in. We have multiple methods to sign in to this application. Let's use MetaMask, use Morales authentication to authenticate, sign, and that takes us to a user page. Now this user page will swap into our token swap application. See what I did there. So all we're really doing in this project is we're working on the user component in our file structure. So opening up Visual Studio Code, go to the pages and open up user.js. And in here, if we close down the terminal and open this up, we see that we have a very simple component that just displays us details of the user. And from the server side props, we get the user details. So we can use those to make sure that the user who's authenticated is making the swaps. Now let's get stuck in. All right, because we're attempting to swap native currency into ERC20 tokens, we have to know the balance of the user's native currency. And we can use the Morales EVM API to achieve this very, very simply. First of all, you just have to import Morales. It'll be included in the repository as a dependency. Now go ahead and in your server side props, where we get the user from the JWT session, let's go ahead and initialize a instance of Morales. So simply do that by running await Morales start with your API key, which should be in your environment variables. And then we only have to run one call to the EVM API, which is EVM API, we're using the account endpoint to get the get native balance. All we have to provide is the address of the user, which we get from the session, and then the chain. Because we're using Polygon mainnet network here, we provided the chain ID here. You can find a list of the supported EVM chains in the Morales documentation, which will be linked in the description as well. And now to return this response as a prop for our component, we have to pass it over here and we'll call it balance and we'll get the response 
and the raw format of the response. Now this will include only an object, including the balance of the native currency Matic in this case, because we defined the chain to be 0x9. All we have to do now is pass the props here into the component, balance and we're ready to use the balance here in our user component so we can for example render the user's address and their balance over in this component like so so the user dot address and then the matic balance is balance dot balance divided by the decimals and will only present it to three decimal points so that is how powerful the morales evm api is it really makes your life more simple when trying to get any data from the blockchain now let's go see if these changes reflected in our development server open up google chrome and look at this our user is up here and the matic balance 2.85 is over here which is the correct balance account 0x9 and the balance of the native currency 2.85 excellent excellent now let's quickly run over the ui and then we'll work on the functionality of actually implementing a swap jump back into visual studio code and bring in use state so we can set up a few state variables for our component which we'll use to render our inputs and make our swap request. Let's paste them in over here. We'll just run through this very quickly because we'll mostly want to focus on the swap functionality. So we have to have a from token. We'll use the native currency token, which is always 0x e e e e e e. And then a two token. As a default, we'll set the USDC ERC20 contract on the Polygon mainnet, which our input will use as a default value. But then there'll be another option. We'll add wrapped Ethereum, but you could add whatever values you like. Then this is the value of the native currency you want to swap we've set it to one matic just as a default again this is something you can change from the inputs and then the value exchange so whatever value we want to swap after we get a quote from the one inch api this value exchange variable will be updated with the amount of the, the two token you would receive with the set value of the native token you are transferring and then of course the decimals we need to know what the decimals of the erc20 token is i believe usdc is six most tokens have a decimal value of 18 so we need to know what the decimal value is so we can represent it correctly on the ui and then these last two variables these are something we need to set as the two address which will be the address we're sending our swap request to which will be the one inch aggregator we'll get this when we request the swap from one inch and the same thing for that transaction data. This will be a hex string with data about the transaction you're trying to make on the blockchain, also given to you when you request the swap from one inch. So these we have to just store so we know the details of the transaction. Now for the UI, let me just paste it underneath our user details. So this final repository will be available for you in the repository below. So you don't have to really go over this, but we basically just have a input over here where we can only select the native currency then you have an input which has the value of the native token that you can use. Then again, you have the two token. We've set two options wrapped Ethereum with the contract as the value and USDC as the contract as the value. And then finally, we have the value exchange, which will be generated when we call the one inch API. So we don't have to worry about that quite yet. That will just be automatically rendered in this disabled input field. And at the bottom, of course, have the two buttons for getting the conversion and swapping the tokens. We'll have to add some on click events here. But first, just creating those two functions, change the two token and change the value. Let's create them over here. So all we're doing here is we're setting the two token variable to the target value selected in the select input. Same thing in the value. We're setting the value to the value selected in the select input and multiplying, of course, by the decimals of the native currency, because we'll need that when making our call to the one inch API. Also, we set the value exchange to null in both cases, because whenever we make changes, our quote will have changed, so we don't want to present the old quote in the UI. Now we've added a lot of features. Let's go see what this actually looks like when we open the app. Save this and open up Google Chrome. And at this point, you should have something like this. So you have this first input, which only has Matic available, but you can swap the amount of Matic you would like to change. Then you have a second input field where you have the two ERC20 tokens we've added. And then when you press the get conversion button, we would like this to convert our one Matic to the equivalent amount of ETH and then allow us to make the swap. And then of course we have a sign out button as well added at the bottom. So all the chunk of UI, which might've been a bit of an overload, just generated this. That's all you need to know. You can even copy it from the final repository. Now let's head over to the one inch API webpage to see which endpoint we need to call to actually make our swap. All right, so we find ourselves in the one inch aggregation protocol API swagger page. The link will be in the description. And let's check out what endpoints we have. We have a swap endpoint over here where we can generate data for calling the one inch router for exchange. Let's go ahead and try it out over here. 
We'll have a prompt token address, which is the native token 0xEE, the two token address, let's change, for example, USDC over here. And then the amount, I guess this is 16 zeros, so 0 0.01 Matic. I guess that's fine for us for now. Then the from address for that, let's use our wallet address like so. And then the slippage, you can start playing around with these more intricate features, like how much slippage you would provide. You could even add this to your UI. Then there's all sorts of different options, which protocols you want to use. If you want to take a fee from each transaction yourself, you can provide a referrer address and a fee over here. And there's all sorts of different parameters you can provide, but these are the necessities. Now, if we scroll down, we can execute this and we get the request URL. So this is the URL we sent our request to. We copy that, but then we, if we look at the response body, we get a from token, which is Matic. Then we get the two token, which is USDC, the two token amount. So we'd get 0 0.0847 USDC tokens for 0 0.01 Matic tokens and so on and so forth. And the most important thing is over here, the transaction object, which includes the from address, our own address, the two address, which is the one inch aggregated protocol, and then the data. So this is the hex string that you can pass when sending a transaction to know what details in that transaction have to be to make this swap using these parameters that we set in our call. But now what we want to do is basically we just want to use this request URL because we have all these details on our front end to make these requests by that way generate this response body so we can then make a web three send transaction call with these details. Again, just make sure you copy this jump back into Visual Studio Code. And let's go ahead and add Axios so we can make that call. Voila. Then go ahead and create a new function for getting our one inch swap details over here, make an asynchronous function called get one inch swap. And then we can make that request to that Axios URL. Boom. So we store it in a variable called TX and we await Axios to get from this request URL. We copied from the one inch aggregator swagger API web page, but we make it a template literal where we can pass as the parameters from our UI, the from token, the two token the user has selected, as well as the value of the native token they want to swap and the address of the user from the session. So this way we can make that request to one inch using our front end details and await for a response and use that to fill out all these other details like the one inch aggregator address to the two variable, the transaction data will have that long hex string, and then we can get the value exchange. So the conversion rate and the decimals of the token that is being exchanged to. So let's add those over here. All right. So all we're doing is we're setting our state variables to the data that the one inch API endpoint provides for us. We can actually so show you this console dot log let's do transaction dot data so we can see all these details we are populating now to make sure that we can try this out we have to initiate this get one inch swap function and we'll do that when we get the conversion button is clicked like so save that and now we should have a functioning request to the one inch api on our development server let's open up google chrome go to our page here let's inspect console and now we can, for example, test to Matic, change it to wrapped Ethereum and get our conversion. And look at this. We get a response from the one inch API. Open this up for you. We get the from token is Matic. We get the two token is Ethereum. We get those transaction details. So the long hex string for the data, the from address, the two address, which is the one inch aggregator contract address and all the details we need to make a swap. Now closing this, you also see that it's populated over here in our disabled input field. So we know that we get 42 Matic 0 0.001 wrapped Ethereum. Now all we have to do because our swap tokens button is now enabled, we have to make sure that we use a Web3 library to make that call using the data we just got from one inch. So jump back into Visual Studio Code, scroll up to the top where we will import our Web3 functionality from Wagmi. So we use the send transaction hook from Wagmi, which will allow us to initialize our wallet and actually send that transaction to the one inch aggregator. But we have to make sure that we provide the details for the
this hook. Let's not add it to the bottom. Let's add it over at the top where we have all our other constants. Add a little space over here. So we use the send transaction hook and from it, we destructure the send transaction function, the data variable, which returns us the transaction has after the transaction has gone through the is loading state and then is success after you've signed the transaction, you get a is success. But this hook to use send transaction takes in a request like so, which we can pass a couple of parameters. We have to pass the from address, which in our case will be us, the user who signed in. So we get the from the session, the user's address, then the two, which we got over here from our one inch API call, we got the two address of the one inch API aggregator. So we set that to the two address, then the data is that long hex string of the data that has the details of that transaction, what token we want to transfer, how much and what token we want to swap it into. And then the value will include, of course, the, the amount of native currency to send along with this transaction, which in this case is also the amount we're swapping to another ERC 20 token. Now what we have to do is call the send transaction function when we click the swap tokens button. So add it over here, like so. So on click of the swap tokens, when it's enabled, we can call the send transaction function with the request details we've set at the top. And then of course, we could also add some details because now we have the state variables from the use send transaction hook. So while is loading, we'll present a div with check wallet. And after it's successful, we just paste the transaction hash, which is stored in the data variable after you've successfully signed the send transaction. And that is all it is. That is how easy it is to use Morales, one inch and Wagmi to make a swap of a native token into any ERC 20 token you provide as options over here. We provided in this case, wrapped Ethereum and USDC, but you just have to go find out the contract addresses for any other ERC 20 tokens. And as long as there's a pool in the one inch aggregator, you can make that swap. Now let's just make sure that this works. Let's open up our app. Everything looks good so far. Let's change this. Let's just do one Matic, change it to wrapped Ethereum because we don't have any wrapped Ethereum in our wallet, go ahead and get the conversion from one inch API and now swap these tokens. Our wallet pops up, ask us, do we want to send one Matic to one inch aggregator to do a swap? Looks like the gas wouldn't be too high. We confirm this and we get a transaction hash. Let's just check in our wallet that this goes through. The swap is pending. The swap has gone through. Let's go over and copy this transaction hash, jump into polygon scan, paste the transaction hash, search for it and look at that. We've changed one Matic to 0 0.0005 wrapped Ethereum's. How cool is that? We can even go check out our own wallet. We can check out our tokens. And here we have that wrapped Ethereum 0 $0.83 worth. And we see that our own balance has dropped from 2.8 Matic to 1.8 Matic. Let's jump back into our app, refresh. You see our Matic balance has dropped and now we can make another transfer. Let's try 0 0.5, get the conversion. One inch gives us 0.41 USD for 0.5 Matic. We swap the tokens, check our wallet. Are we happy with this? Yes, we are. Confirm. And we get another transaction hash. And soon here, we should get some more USDC in our wallet. Check out the activity. It's still pending. And as it went through, our Matic balance dropped to 1.3, but our USDC balance jumped up to 1.7. How cool is that? I really hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, this is only using native tokens to swap into ERC 20 tokens. You'd have to provide the one inch aggregator contract approval to handle your ERC 20 tokens. If you wanted to swap ERC 20 tokens to other ERC 20 tokens, if you want us to make a tutorial on that in the future, let us know in the comments below, but I hope this was very interesting for you and you can use Morales with all these other protocols to make cool, cool dApps. I'll see you in the next one.